The royal family just can't stay out of the spotlight. The Queen's passing, along with all the Meghan and Harry dramas, the world has been closely following the British monarchy recently, but we don't nearly get as much insider info as we need. Don't worry though, for days when you want some drama, you can tune into these eight TV shows to stream about royal families and their messy lives. Without further ado, let's go, starting with Elizabeth the first at number 8. The miniseries starring Helen Mirren, the Queen as Elizabeth I of England, directed by Tom Hooper, known for The King's Speech, first premiered in 2005 on HBO and Channel 4. Beginning in 1579, Elizabeth I zeroes down on the last 25 years of her almost 45-year reign. This includes the twilight of her romance with the Earl of Leicester and her later courtship with with the Earl of Essex. With her reputation as the Virgin Queen intact, Elizabeth is free to settle into many liaisons in her middle 50s. Some of the most lavish visuals ever captured on film may be seen here, with perfectly crafted costumes and cleverly crafted sets. Starring alongside Mirren and Jeremy Irons from The Borgias, who plays the role of the Earl of Leicester, then there is Hugh Dancy from Hannibal, who is the Earl of Essex. Toby Jones is from Tinker Tailor Soldier Spy as Robert Cecil, Ian McDermott from the infamous Star Wars as Lord Burgley, and finally, Ewan Bremner as King James VI, Eddie Redmayne, with whom Hooper later collaborated in 2015's The Danish Girl, also stars as Southampton. You may now watch Elizabeth I on Amazon Prime Video. Next, at number 7, The Royal House of Windsor. Now, this is another TV show that had the people on their feet because of how epic the storyline was. The Royal House of Windsor, a documentary series that debuted on Netflix in 2017, can be your next watch if you love all things royal. The six-part documentary series uses previously unseen letters, photos, and films of the royal family to provide an in-depth look at their life. In addition, it has invited a panel of experts in history, literature, and Windsor lore to weigh in on the various events that have been chronicled here. However, the show was heavily criticized for how it portrayed Princess Diana. The monarch and his two sons, Prince Edward and King George V, are the primary protagonist in some episodes. The family's dynamic and rumors are analyzed. From a hatred of the monarchy to several hidden affairs, there's a lot in there. Finishing it will leave you wanting more conspiracy theories about the scandals, more podcasts, on individual royals and more in-depth knowledge of the monarchy in general. For anyone with an interest in history, storytelling, or drama, the Royal House of Windsor is the ideal entry point into the realm of England's most renowned dynasty. Moving on at number 6, The Great. The series, starring Elle Fanning as Catherine the Great, keeps viewers captivated with its representation of the Russian Empress's ascent to power and later conspiracy to depose her husband, Peter III. The Great's tone is almost the polar opposite of that of the crown. The recklessness, humor, and strange behavior are all important elements of the story. The show is a brilliant parody, and Fanning is fantastic in the starring role, but it takes a lot of liberties with the historical facts. So get ready to have some fun. The Great, at its finest, resembles the sleekest of TikTok historical summaries. That's because it simplifies the narrative of a young lady transformed by brutality into a quick, dynamic female heroine. For the present audience, Catherine, played by Fanning, is the play's protagonist and center, navigating self-doubt, a romance with an assigned court lover, Leo, and the tensions of church, class, and enlightenment ideals embodied by the orthodox archbishop, the sharp-tongued maid, Mariel, and the the hapless politician Orlov. She's a complex character, but the show manages to pull it off. Fanning captures McNamara's sharp wit and absurdist game playing while keeping her grounded in humanity. Following up, The Tudors at number 5. Showtime's The Tudors covers Henry's whole reign from the beginning to the end, and Jonathan Rhys Myers gives a superb performance as the passionate, arrogant king who is so different from the 
iconic portrayal in history books. The series, developed by seasoned English screenwriter Michael Hurst, put a new spin on the classic narrative of a discontented king and his six out of seven unhappy wives. Even though Natalie Dormer's performance as the Sid Anne Boleyn in the first two seasons is the show's highlight, the whole series is fascinating and should be binged if you can. It's literally that good. Some say that The Tudors isn't the most sophisticated or thought-provoking drama out there, but it is absolutely fantastic from beginning to finish, with incredible attention to historical detail and solid performances. All in all, you'll get the drama that you want with some extravagance sprinkled here and there. Up next at number 4, Edward and Mrs. Simpson. If you're craving some serious royal family drama, you can always try out the famous Thames series, Edward and Mrs. Simpson, from 1978, for a less polished view of the situation. This seven-part series provides an interesting look at a remarkable period in British history. Though we are aware of the final outcome, the story remains fascinating. Love? Slightly mentioned here and there, but we get to look at a lot of other elements. We see how the characters are driven by greed, envy, resentment, or self-interest. The series is based on the classic biography of the Duke of Windsor by Francis Donaldson, who also served as a consultant on the show. It covers the years 1928 through December 1936. Edward Fox, in a part for which he earned a BAFTA, plays the prince who eventually becomes king. He brilliantly portrays the male royals, who, even in modern times, are still marked by an odd blend of shyness and arrogance, and somehow, he manages to make himself a little more pleasant than the average person would expect. If you want to learn more about how the British manage crises involving the royal family, it's worth your time to sit through the sometimes slow sections of the miniseries. The acting is really excellent, the performers nearly seem like a carbon copy of Edward and Wallace Simpson, so you'll have a great time binging. Not to forget, at number 3, Rain. Next in line for the highest rated royal drama is Rain on the CW. It aired in 2013 and portrayed Mary, Queen of Scots, life and eventual death. Despite its bubbly appeal and entertaining costumes, it was deemed frivolous and disrespectful by several reviewers. It's not like Bridgerton was the first first book to modernize stories about the British upper class in the style of Gossip Girl. Rain focused on Mary's youth, and let's just say that it made for a lot of angsty teenage drama. After an assassin's attempt to poison Mary at the convent where she was hiding failed, she made her way to the French court. When she finally arrives, she discovers that her fellow royals and the nobility who empower them engage in backstabbing and bed swap. What's more, The Last Tsar at number 2. The plot itself is fascinating, as it traces the mighty Romanov dynasty's downfall and Nicholas II's family in Russia at the center of the contemporary revolution. Six episodes show his coronation, catastrophic war room tactics, and time with Rasputin until his surrender in the aftermath of World War I. Through a combination of reenactments and narratives, we see all the major events leading up to his family's violent end. The Last Sars is an interesting look at the life of a dysfunctional family that also serves as an informative documentary. Archival video from the era is strategically placed across the series, and all the highs and lows are covered. It's fascinating information that helps portray a more accurate picture of life at the period. There are some good stock photos included, and the specialists speak with clarity and experience. Excitement. All the performers put out strong performances, the camera work is stunning, and the clothes are stunning. You learn to appreciate its beauty and relax there. Even the dramatization itself is really entertaining at times. Finally, at number one, The Last Kingdom. A well-written, brutally realistic series, it relies on the appeal of its many characters to drive the narrative of Uhtred Ragnarsson. The Last Kingdom is set around the period of the Viking invasions 
Nations of Britain and debunks any concerns that may have been there. Besides a captivating plot that pulls on Britain's rich history, the show's ambiance and set design recreate the era well throughout its eight episodes. The late 9th century AD setting of Netflix and the BBC's epic series based on Bernard Cornwell's Saxon Stories books finds England split into seven kingdoms. Uhtred, Alexander Draymond, the protagonist of The Last Kingdom, is a Saxon who was reared as a Dane. He, along with King Alfred the Great, finds himself at a crossroads when it comes to the founding of a country. David Dawson Fans of medieval warrior stories won't want to miss The Last Kingdom. The program has deep plots, unique characters, intense drama, and lots of action. You can stream it right now on Amazon Prime Video. That's a wrap for this video. Which of these shows will you be binging on next? Let us know in the comments below. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this. See you in the next one.